Hello and welcome to the Engadget stage at E3 2017. And uh, this is the panel I have been looking forward to all week, seriously. Um, this, is, this is why I come to E3. I want to talk about indie games and indie game development. So uh, we are here with a trio of game developers. So let's just go down the line, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, what you do. Uh, so I'm Ben Reese, I'm from Arizona, um, one half of Team Colorblind. And we are making a game called Aztez that is actually finally shipping very soon. Uh, and I'm an artist and a combat designer. Okay. Very awesome. indie, have been my whole career. Awesome. Well, I'm Dennis Vigen from um, Sweden. I'm the half of Denaton Games. We made Hotline Miami 1 and 2. Uh, I'm the graphic artist and designer. Awesome. Great. I'm, I'm Aaron Robinson Swink. I have a company called Ivy Games. Uh, we made a game called Gravity Ghost, which is on Steam, coming to PS4 at some point. Uh, and, <laughs> and PuzzleBots a couple years ago, too. And I also am the creative director of the Games and Playable Media Master's program at UC Santa Cruz. Very I'm fancy. Busy. <laughs> very busy, very fancy. I like that. Um, OK, so we're all here. We're using, well, I'm using so far the word indie uh, mm -hmm. to describe what you guys do. Or So I want to start off on a solid foundation. What does indie mean to you? Like, I just, I just want a quick definition. It might change even by the end of this conversation because honestly, defining indie is a nebulous yeah. and strange thing yeah. to do. Um, but that's kind of what we're talking about. So let's, let's just start somewhere. Uh, what, how would you define indie? I would say that it's, it's sort of free of um, financial management. Yeah. Like, all the teams I've ever been on that were independent, we sort of answered to ourselves. And we were sort of responsible for our own financial futures. And to me, that's a big deal because there isn't anyone breathing down your neck and there isn't anyone telling you exactly what to do. Yeah. Um, but it also means you're, you're sort of skydiving, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, that's what it's always meant. Nice. And still does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's, um, there's, there's, there's no one involved in the, in the game that is not working on it. Like, there's no other control in the game that is not hands-on working on the game. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, you're independent, so the people making the game is the only one to do any decisions what it's going to be and how it's going to be released. Right. Yeah, I'd say it's a game where there's nobody, even if they are providing like publishing money, they're not in control of what goes into the game. I think it's like if the team has their own control and they can make decisions based on what they think is right for the game, then that's, that's independent to me. Yeah. There's also crowdfunding. And that's obviously had its day, had its falls, you know, it, it, it's come and gone. And right now, honestly, it feels like there are a lot of options for crowdfunding. There are a lot of people like diving into that. And I wonder what your thoughts are. I mean, is that a good thing? Is it is it risky to bank too much on crowdfunding? What's the unsure? Yeah, I'm sure. I've never tried it. No. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Is it, scary? I, I, it freaks me out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm terrified of a million people emailing me and being like, "Where's yeah. our stuff?" Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. The pressure. I, I don't think I could handle right. the pressure of exactly. someone paying and then waiting right. to get it. Right. Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 When I was working on Gravity Ghost, I, at a certain point, like, knew I needed to have some money to finish, so I put it up for pre-order. And to me, I was a lot more comfortable saying, hey, you give me $10, I give you the game, but you're not giving me like 100 bucks for like a special hat or something. Like, let's yeah. just keep this <laughs> right. simple. It was pretty close to done, right? Yeah, it was. It was I, very... I, that's the only thing I would do, because yeah. that's like, yeah. it's not this big indefinite period. Yeah. Of yeah. 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 Let's talk about social media. So that, I think, is honestly, one of the biggest changes the industry has seen just in the way that that players interact with game developers and especially indie developers because you guys are, are out there. You don't have handlers. You don't have Phil Spencer telling you to shut up or anything, you know? Um, so how does social media and that interaction, I guess, change the way you develop? Or what are some, what are some of the most memorable stories of social media interactions you've had. It definitely helped me spread the word about the game when it came out. People yeah. writing about it and sharing about it. I've noticed for myself, like, even if a game gets a good review, I won't go out and buy it right away. But if I see it on Twitter a bunch of times, I'm like, okay, a bunch of people I care about seem to think this is good, I'll probably just hit and buy it. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, if you can get that critical mass of tweets on, like, release day or something, that's going to be really, really good. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's so hard. I mean, uh, gosh, I don't know if you count, like, YouTubers in that as social media, kind of. Yeah. I don't know. They um, like one of the big breaks we got was like Total Biscuit decided to play my game, and that's just because we sent out a bunch of keys to different reviewers, like hoping one, you know, it's hoping the darts will stick, and like he's got a big audience, and I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and it's weird how some things on, like Twitter, can feel so important when you're reading it, when you're in that world. Sure. They feel like the most important thing you can talk about at the moment. 
but yeah, just taking a step back, it's so hard to do that with social media. Right. And so I think in the end, a lot of people are just getting out of it. Like, yeah. uh, like let let your marketer, once you find a marketer, let them handle it and just walk yeah. away. Yeah. But then like, once in a while, you get like a cool email or a cool sure. Twitter message or something, just something interesting actually. Like it doesn't have to be just praise or, you know, just yeah. someone interesting is doing something interesting or talking about something cool. And, yeah. And, I think you miss a lot of them, at least for me when I'm not very active, I miss a lot of the cool stuff. Personally, how do you guys measure success? What's a successful game uh, that you've made? What, what does that mean? It's like, it, am I happy take, with take it? about it for a second. Yeah. 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 Am I happy with it? You right, know, right. I feel like we gave it our best effort. I mean, I know for a fact you can have a game with like really good critical reviews that kind of only has middling sales, but I'm, I'm so happy for those middling sales, right? It could have been worse, I guess. Sure. Yeah. But like, yeah. You know, the, the people who reviewed it really liked it because I think we gave them something new. Uh, and I think if you review games all the time, you're looking for something new. But I'm not sure. It's like that doesn't necessarily equal a lot of sales these days if you're indie, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, yeah. You don't compromise on the idea that you had. Yeah. It turns out the way you want. That's a success. Like. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Me too. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm generally, I'm narcissistic enough that I'm happy with most of the things yeah. I've ever touched. I feel like that's just kind of something that naturally happens to me. It's all gold. Yeah. <laughs> to me, success is like I get to keep doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've obviously had like my failures, but there was someone else there to be like, well, now come help us. Right. So, I guess that too is like its own success as well because I just yeah. got to keep going. So there, there used to be that kind of mid-sized studio, um, mid-sized studios making games. Not as big as the Call of Duties, but but just as polished looking. But that kind of faded away over okay. the past ten years. And now indie is just massive. And yes, yeah, mobile games have made indie massive, and the accessibility of tech has made indie games massive. But now it feels like we're at a point where indie can turn into something a little more, um, and something a little more secure, and not a, not as in flux, I guess is what I mean. More secure. That's the dream. Right, so I mean, is that happening? Do you guys feel that shift taking place or, or is that totally off? I yeah. feel like like the Cappies and the Super Giants are maybe exactly. sort of already that. Like, right. They're 20 to 30 or more people and they... Campo they, Santo and they, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, It's like they seem to be sustained right. off their, off the power of their butts. Like they've done enough good things. Yeah. Whereas most of us, like, you know, we have a few things that were good that had cold success but not on the level of happy, you know? Happy, so I don't know, yeah. maybe maybe that's something we're all potentially capable of. Right. Well, I, I think most most of these companies here might, might see success as um, how much revenue they get out of the game. They and do. in that sense, I think indie games are more successful because even though it's not as much money, there's like less people right. to divide it with. Yeah. So you actually make if you're successful with if the indie successful. game, you actually make more money than the guys working exactly. on the big game. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This was awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. So that's indie in 2017. I don't know if we cracked it, but uh, but we at least talked about it. Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys.